Many of you have seen this truck on my channel many, many times, and several have made comments saying that I must really love this truck. Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. Uh, I bought this truck eight or nine years ago with 38,000 miles on it, and today it's got 48,000. So that's how little I drive it. Um, it's never been a real suitable truck for me, and um, you know, we'll go over all the details of what it is and isn't. It's an 05 C4500. It's a C 6.6 uh, .6 Duramax motor, Allison Automatic on an aftermarket suspension. So this truck was built by GM and then went to Monroe Conversions. Monroe Conversions took the truck and then took it from their base model, pretty standard, but it had power options and goodies and upgraded some things. So let's talk about what I like and what I dislike. I like the fact that you sit up really high in this cab. Vision is really, really good. Um, I like how spacious the cab is. I like how big the brakes are. I don't like the brake system as far as uh, the monitoring, the, the warning lights, and the brake lights and the switches that are always so problematic. But the brakes themselves are pretty good. Um, it steers well. It's a heavy truck. This is a very heavy truck compared to a 450 or a 550. In that respect that it's that heavy, what I do like about it is when you hook a trailer to it, the load of the trailer doesn't push this around nearly as easily as it does a lighter truck. Those are what I like about it. Here's a list of what I don't like about it. It's a 6.6 Duramax. I'm not a Duramax fan. I'm never going to be a Duramax fan. If you are, great for you. I hope you enjoy them. I don't like the interior. I don't like that bed. And I don't like the air ride suspension. And I'll tell you exactly why. If you see this spot right here, this was from our fifth wheel camper when we went to uh, the Mid-America Trucking Show in Louisville, Kentucky. That's because this bed, the side rail, sits so high compared to a regular 3500. So when, when Monroe gets this truck, it was a 60 cab to axle cabin chassis truck. Had dual tanks, one front, one rear. Well, in order to make the body lines of this generation of, of Chevy truck bed work with this, they have to bring up the bed with a sub-assembly, and that also makes the wheel lip opening about the same. This is not a standard Chevy bed. Monroe takes these beds from GM, takes off the sides. They made their own fiberglass side to accommodate the extra fuel tank and the fact that a cabin chassis truck is four inches longer than a pickup truck the axle is set back four inches longer so they have to extend it and you have this bump out here as well so they brought it out just a little bit farther so i mean the appearance is pretty good i guess and i like the truck for the appearance but the bed height is too high and the airbags are dumped right now there's no air in them so they're usually four inches higher than this so it makes it very difficult so they put that in put the sub assembly in the other thing is a traditional gm bed and the frame is quite wider than a cabin chassis both the frame rails are quite a bit wider so in order to use the factory bolt holes in this they had to make a sub assembly and widen it out and that's part of what you see right there <clears throat> so this never works for us because it's always too high it's difficult to get in i have to be careful everywhere i go because i'll end up damaging the bed just like that tonneau cover so i have tried to sell this truck on and off for two years and there's tons of people that like the truck uh unfortunately they don't they don't like it as they don't have as much like in paying the price it takes to buy the truck because they do you know thinking it's a nice truck so it's uh, i've tried to sell it for two years and i've never been able to get a buyer to come through with the money um i've seen them i've seen them listed for far more than i wanted for ones with a lot more mileage and i was well under where i thought i needed to be but i've never never been able to get it sold so what we're going to do now is since i can't sell it haven't been able to sell it is we're going to change it to suit our needs and i think we're going to fix everything gm did wrong with this truck 
what I think they did wrong was let Monroe put them aftermarket seats in there. I don't want them. I don't like them. Um, we're going to do away with them. It would originally came this color interior with a tan air ride seat, but much narrower. Uh, the whole back would be much narrower. So Monroe puts in that electric sunroof, all this wood grain trim, <clears throat> all the wood grain on the doors. It would have came with the power windows, power locks, air cruise tilt. So they swapped out the seats and that stuff. <clears throat> and then in the rear, they removed the rear, rear seat and they replaced it with this uh, electric fold down seat. And you know, when they ordered this from GM, it had a rear defroster on it. Um, it's got exhaust brake. It's got, it's got, I think, pretty much every option you could have got at that time. So, but we're going to use this to work with. So we're going to offer this up for anybody that uh, that's looking for Monroe interior. If you have a black or a dark gray complete interior, we'll swap you out. You're going to have to pony up some dough uh, to get the upgrade, but we're willing to swap these out for a factory that means door panels if it's tan color on this truck it's coming out uh, we want the darker color because we're going to use it for work i like the the steps here but those are going away we're going with something different on the steps so those will be up for sale once we build, get that built um what else it's got a ridiculous stereo in it which you know um I don't even listen to the radio when I drive. I like to hear the motor, so I never use it. That stuff's coming out. All that's going to be for sale. And like I said, we're going to fix everything that I think GM did wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, that means a 6.6 Duramax too. So um, this is going to be a very, very, very long build series. The uh, first thing we're going to do is get this bed off. I've sold the bed. <clears throat> There's a guy from Tennessee that's coming to get this bed. He's taking the bed, the sub-assembly, the tailgate, and the tonneau cover, and the B&W fold-over hitch. In my opinion, for what we do, I don't ever want a fold-over gooseneck bed in anything I'm towing with. I want a secure-mounted, non-removable gooseneck because I'm going to push it to the limits. And I know guys are going to say I've never had any troubles and whatever. That's great. You haven't. And I haven't yet either. I don't want, I want to eliminate that possibility. So... That's what we're going to do next. I've got the the Link Air Ride suspension that Monroe put on here. Uh, it's aftermarket. They removed the the factory spring suspension and put this Link Air Ride on it with its own leveling valve. It's actually dropped four inches right now. Uh, I've sold that and we're going to remove it. And I have been gathering parts for a while to do this build. So uh, stick around. Like I said, we're going to fix everything GM did wrong. So that's going to take a long time. pretty pretty uneventful um people are asking you know like i don't like aftermarket companies and i'll tell you this is exactly why uh, this was the bed mount here and as you can see it's not even fastened in the front it's fastened right here with a rubber block which i don't know why you'd want a rubber block for that it's mounted solid right behind the bump stop here it's this bracket is tied to it and sandwiched in there and it's just one more back here and that's it um, kind of sad you know this the plate right here to mount the gooseneck to B&W fold over flip over is pretty substantial but I don't know quite a bit ahead of that axle too but um, this is one of the reasons I'm 
doing away with the suspension this is all the travel you have when you haul heavy like i like to um we need more travel than that and uh well actually i just want more travel you know they use that this on top of the axle and look how tall it is so when they bring it back down had they brought this down lower they could have used a taller bag and had a better ride because on a short wheelbase truck like this uh, you need all the advantages to a, to an airbag that you can get so if you had a really long wheelbase that may not be as big a deal but it certainly is on a short one okay we got everything unhooked we think ready to come off now. Yep. I was holding it up there was two two little bolts here and it was just it wasn't holding this but the bracket was like up against these and it wouldn't make it move upward so he went ahead and took them out and then it came right off We gotta take the bottom loose now. Hopefully it comes apart okay. So I'm taking this pan hard bar off, and this is something I really, I have a pet peeve with aftermarket. You know, this needs to be in here, and this should be a snug fit, but see how loose the bolt is. And uh, the bigger problem is the bolt they used, you can see where it sat, the bracket sat on the threads and worked on the threads. So instead of it being on the shank like that, and putting a washer on this side to take up the difference and then put a nut on it was riding in the shank and that's one of the reasons it was loose so we'll have to get him a couple new bolts to put in this because we're not going to ship it like that we'll throw these aside so we can get two of them i think they're both the same yep both the same and they're only top it off their grade fives why do you think it warned that Alright, so this is the track bar mount. Everything on this link suspension is bolt on. Uh, this just has U bolts that wrap around the axle and then it's welded to this to the saddle on this side that holds the everything in, holds the the U bolts through the whole entire thing. So we're gonna we're gonna be taking all this off. Next I've got the airbags just about ready. I'm gonna clean up the mounts now the wire wing clean on this up next and then we're going to get this out of the way we're going to lift this just a little bit and chalk it somehow to hold the frame up Get the airbags off, unhooked, and the suspensions up because we have it hanging from the grate all. So we're gonna take the brackets off now. This 
guy wants all these bolts. I, I would replace them, but whatever. I don't reuse suspension bolts at all. I don't think there's a lot of money here, but whatever. whole suspension the way this thing works is all you do if you have spring suspension is this is where the front spring hanger is and it's riveted like this you would knock them out put bolts in and then back here your rear leaf spring hanger would be right here where this cross member is it obviously doesn't use that so you take this cross member and you knock out these rivets and then bolt this bracket into place. It's a very simple system to install. Hardest part is probably getting the old rivets out. that side off because the U-bolts were, you know, kind of rusted in there a little bit or stuck in there or whatever. You can save the PB blaster there about to get squished. <clears throat> see all the suspensions out of course we got the bed off and all that um, we popped the one brake line I looked at it was pretty rough right at the holder so I came back here to where it had a factory union and I just uh, took the union apart and plugged it off with one of them caps so the next step on this project is going to be to remove the rear fuel tank and the front fuel tank we are going to sell tanks to sending units I'm going to keep the fillers because I need those um, we're going to sell the lines that come up to the front and this fitting from here to here and that's any unit. We're going to sell all those including the tanks because 
what I'm doing, I won't be using them tanks. And I know there's a lot of guys out there that are looking for that rear tank, need that lift pump, and that lift pump works, and need these lines. And I'm sure some guys could use that bigger tank. But that's going to be next. So uh, obviously we got some body work to be done. This is where that stupid uh, tonneau cover rubbed the back of it. And you can see it just wet sanded the paint basically down to nothing so we'll get the back of that handled and uh i don't think i'll do it i think i'll have i'll have somebody do that but um yeah that'll be the next step we're going to continue we're going to strip the frame get it all cleaned up and uh we're moving this axle back to uh about right here we're going 84 cab to axle that's the current plan um but the longer this sits here and i look at it and that may change but anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video and this is one of many because it's going to be an awful big build on this truck it's going to be very very detailed and uh as always it'll be somewhat budget conscience i've been gathering parts for this build for a while and uh i'm hoping i can get it all together here pretty soon these will be for sale these steps here all four of them all the way around we're taking them off we won't be using them so all four of these steps will be available everything i'm telling you about uh you know the bed and the suspension is already sold but those tanks and all that parts that go with it they're still available so anyways hope you guys enjoyed and uh catch you on the next one